welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 40, New Year, New Book, and I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. Um, you can find show notes on the blog, www.knittingsamuraiplus1. One? Number one? No, I think it's the word one, plus one, all one word, dot blogspot.com. And um, please leave a star rating if you like the show over on iTunes. It helps it pop up faster for other people and for all your podcasts. You know, haven't said that in a while. So go out there, rate everybody. It really makes everybody feel great to get that little bit of a thank you boost. So it is a new year and I am buried in mountains of knitting projects and yarn and you can't see it, it's on the floor, but I have a whole stack of new books and I'm super excited about all of that. So I guess we should just jump right into the knitting content. Uh, as you know, we are doing a Dark and Stormy knit along. The cast on date is Dark and Stormy is a sweater. Uh, should I bring up the powder? What do you think? Okay, I will. Um, I got, so I've had my iPad for a while. But I got a case for Christmas, a better case. Look at it, it's red, it's glorious. I love it, I love it, love it, love it. I had a Apple smart case and it and I did not agree on the way things should be. So, um, anyways, so we're doing a dark and stormy cow. And cast on is tomorrow, slash tonight, if you're focus. There's the pattern. There's a, a beautiful cabling detail down the back, but it's a shawl collar, three button cardigan. So, and the, just the fact that it's called Dark and Stormy, it needs to be knit in a really dark color. So I ran to my LYS and um, bought some non-super wash yarn. Huh, silly me, but I guess I'll be okay. You guys have encouraged me. So I got Cascade 220 Heathers. I don't know how well this will show, but it is a navy heathered with a uh, brown, like a fawn color. So here's my caked up one. I have, I think, six more of these sitting in the closet. So I am all ready to go. I know, I can't believe it. We're doing this. We're doing this. We're doing this. Um, next week, I should have some sort of giveaway. So relating to the cow in some way. If you are going to cast on, please label your project dark, or tag it dark uh, KSP1. And that will you know, bring up all the images so everybody can check out what we're doing. There's a very active thread over in the group on Ravelry. That's Knitting Samurai Plus One group. So go over there, chat it up. Let's see what we do. I'm so excited that we're all going to make a bunch of these sweaters together. So I talk with my hands, right? Oh, here comes the sun. Do, 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 do. <laughs> and you see my hands flying around a lot. You may have noticed a new piece of jewelry. Not on the fingers, not on the hands, but on the wrist. So for Christmas, my parents gave me probably the best gift I've received in years. I know Steve would be upset to hear that, but it's true. Um, I burst out crying when I opened it, and that doesn't happen very often. <laughs> they, and you won't be able to read it, but they um, had a custom sterling silver bracelet made for me. So I've always, well, in 2006, they got me the Knitting Samurai bracelet. So that's this one that I wear all the time. Like, I've had meltdowns because I can't find it, and we have to go back to the cottage we were staying at and drive three extra hours to get my bracelet because I took it off and left it on the nightstand. Like, and then I learned just don't take it off. So I always wear this bracelet, right? And that's me, that's my rap name, that Knitting Summer. Um, so my mom discovered that I do this podcasting thing still, which she's like, how do you find time? <laughs> And really like the name of it, the Knitting Samurai Plus one. So she had a custom one made for me. It has these cool, I don't know if you can see them, but they stick out a little bit. And finishing pieces. It's a bigger bracelet, obviously, or bangle. Um, it's nice, and it's a, it has embroidered on it, Knitting Samurai Plus one in this really fancy script. So it's gorgeous. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> So, anyways, um, that was one of my big Christmas gifts. So I have my bracelet on. I wanted to just share that with you. Um, and also, since I'm talking about Christmas, it was a very, very, drop everything on the floor, uh, bookie, 
fucky. Very book heavy Christmas. I don't. I hope he can't hear Roland on the monitor. He has been down for a nap for half an hour and has decided not to sleep. I got this many books. More to come on the books. I don't know if you saw the purple tags. Okay. <laughs> scattered, scattered, ah, everywhere. On the needles. This is my um, Harvest Moon cardigan knit with the Yowza Homestead colorway. I have been going gangbusters on this thing because I'm pulling off stitches. I didn't, wasn't really thrilled about the idea of having three sweaters on the needles at once, so I was like, ah, that's the one closest to done. I want to finish it. So um, I'm not pulling too hard because the bottom's tucked in, but you can see this is how it looks. I do have three buttonholes. So it'll button, the last one will be right below my bust. It does come together, it's just I don't want to tug on it too much. So this is, yes, it goes to right below where am I at? I'm about here, at my hips. So I have another um, six rows to knit, and then I do the bind off. So that is coming along. Here, you can see it better if I do this, I'm sure. So there is the glorious homestead color. Don't you just love it? I do. I think it's lovely. I wanted to make sure I only had two skeins. I wanted to get it as far, extend the yarn as long as possible and try and get more on the sleeves. We'll see how I do. I only have 250 yards left, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, so when it became time and I realized I was knitting the inside of the pocket, I just picked up that Hunter Green Cascade 220 Superwash yarn that I had. Um, I had actually bought it to do color work sweater and then realized a color work sweater and worsted weight yarn would be really heavy. So I didn't end up knitting the sweater. Um, so the inside of the pockets are dark green and this is how it will look on the front. There is a pocket edging so you can see my fingers sitting right on the top. There's this beautiful edging that goes on. It's one of the main details of the sweater I would say. So that will sit over it so you absolutely won't see the dark green and I'll just know it's there. Well, that's fine. Um, at one point I was knitting 70 out of 180-ish stitches with the dark green, so I was really cutting, you know, it's almost half, at least two third, uh, at least a third of the sweater on those rows with the dark green, so I really felt like I was accomplishing my goal of extending the yarn, so we'll see how I do. I may have bought some more, um, yowza. <laughs> My in-laws gave me um, cash to go have my car detailed for my birthday because I said that's what I wanted. And life's gotten away from us. It's been a few weeks since my birthday. I haven't actually had the car detailed yet. And Miss Babs is having 20% off, as you've heard, through, I think, today, through the 31st. I'm not sure. But I went over there and I bought a sweater's worth of Yaza. So you will see that in the coming weeks. Oh, those colors are so gorgeous. So gorgeous. So that's coming, because this is just glorious to work with. Glorious! In this bag, there is a beatnik, an unloved beatnik that I have not touched. I will touch it. I will get back to it. And even if getting back to it means not working on the section I'm on and just knitting a sleeve, because I feel like the beatnik has the potential to be one of those masterpiece pieces, right? So I did the Ivy League vest four years ago. That is one of my pinnacle pieces of knitting for me personally. Like it, a color work gorgeousness best. Now the thing doesn't fit me because <laughs> I don't swatch. And I was a newish knitter and I didn't really know what I was doing. It's a beautiful. I knit it with all the colors and yarn of the pattern. But it's just probably a, oh, it's probably a 40, maybe a 42. So I'm saving it. I'm not giving it to anyone because it was one of my pinnacle pieces and I feel like all the cabling in the beatnik it has that same potential plus the over dyeing aspect like just makes it a little more unique a little more me so I really want to finish it I'm going to plow through it it's not going to finish with the knit along it's just it's not going to happen I'd rather knit on other things right now but I do want to finish it so I'm not putting it aside I'm not hibernating it I'm still going to talk on it and even if I only knit on it for an hour a week 
an hour a week it is. You know, I really enjoyed, personally enjoyed watching Stephen on Dramatic Knits knit that beautiful cable sweater for himself. And I felt so so much joy for him when it was finally finished because it took forever. Some of those big projects take a while because we're not all monogamous and we don't all want to just be Megan. So, <laughs> so I will still continue to talk about it, but it's not done right now. Don't you like how I'm like working my way through my stack over here? Vanilla bean socks. I don't think, I might even be on the same row I was on last time you saw them, so. Purse knitting, they just ride around with me. Knit on them while I'm in line at Duncan. <laughs> Which is a lot lately, holy cow. I have been drinking my mocha squirrels like crazy in this bag. So last time we talked, I was like, ah, it's the holidays. Lots of time off, what am I gonna work on? And I showed you the potential of three things I was thinking about casting on. Oh, and the funny thing is that at Christmas, I had this delusion that we would spend three days off and I would have all this knitting time. I, the only thing I knit on was the uh, Harvest Moon sweater, and that was while I was sitting in the IMAX movie theater for The Hobbit with my 3D glasses on. It was, it was a great movie. It was a great, um, my take on it is it was Lord of the Rings take two. So if you enjoyed Lord of the Rings and that formula of run from the goblins, run from this, chase by that, uh, you'll like it. My husband, who is a huge Lord of the Rings fan and an even bigger Hobbit fan from his childhood, he read it multiple times as a kid, hated The Hobbit because it's an unexpected journey. It's different. It's not there and back again. It's not the same story. Uh, it's Peter Jackson taking the characters and making his own story. So he really did not enjoy that movie. I thought it was a great little romp. I read The Hobbit once in college. Had no real strong connection to it. So those are our two reviews on the movie. But so I didn't get any knitting done while I was in, while we were in, at my parents' house during uh, Christmas on anything besides that sweater. But then afterwards, this past week, it's been really quiet at work. I worked two days, three days, two days, for two days. And then this weekend, um, we went up to my in-laws and celebrated Christmas with them. And that's a six hours, six hour car ride. So I had lots of knitting time there too. So the Milo by Georgie, 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 what's your last name? Hollem made it onto my needles. So this is Cascade 220 Superwash in the... 1919 olive green heather colorway and I am using US size fives instead of sixes because I couldn't find my sixes and even though the pattern said it should be very uh, it should be a negative ease sweater this is for kid I just I didn't agree with her like yes it looks cute with negative ease but then that's a shorter wearing period so it'll have some positive ease the belly will grow and then it will fit him more so I am knitting the uh, 3t size which has a 22 inch chest. He, um, most of his sweaters are 24 inch chest right now, so I'm, I didn't quite agree with her ages that she was giving, like calling that a 3T, I would have called it a 2T, but that's what, what I'm doing. And this is, I've broke, I've split off, right, so the arms are done, armholes are done. And I picked, the cable I picked out of the ones in the pattern, let's see. Let's see, let's see if I can show it to you. Not that one. Not that one. I really like all the options she gives. It's, um, she calls this additional cable option, cable pattern two, the giant cable. So it's just a big, it's a constant twist instead of Becca. <laughs> so that's where that's at. That's been fun. I worked on it while I, one night last week, stayed up way too late. I'm staying up too late lately. Um, watching most excellent, best, mo the most, the best, most exotic, Marigold Hotel, whatever that Judy Dunch movie is. It was good. It wasn't great. It was good. But I, I, it was okay. I also watched Hope Springs with Meryl Streep and Tommy Lee Jones. Not necessarily a movie I'd recommend. <laughs> But I really liked it. It was weird. I was like, how did this find its way into our queue? And then I put the disc in and saw Meryl Streep. And I was like, oh, well, it's, you know, we tend to watch. I tend to watch whatever she does. So I enjoyed it. I'm not sure it's everyone's cup of tea. Definitely read the description before you watch it so you don't get caught off guard. And then lastly, 
on the needles, I cast on a color work hat for myself. So, and I know it's a silly little hat, but Roland wears ear flaps all the time, so why can't mommy? So this is Knit Pick Stroll Sport Weight in the Eggplant Colorway. Or maybe I should show you on the ear flap. There we go. In the Eggplant Colorway. And then this colorful yarn is this bit right here. Part of my, you gotta get to $50 to get the free shipping purchases. Um, I think it's a discontinued colorway. It's Knit Picks Felici in the Sport Weight in the Groovy Colorway. So I really like how it's knitting up. First, you probably can't see it, but it's a very pale green, and now it's turning into this hot pink. And then the next color, I believe, is going to be this bright blue, and then there's an orange, a brown, and a, a lavender type purple. So I am doing a bit of designing here with this, so that's a, it's a nice distraction from all the sweater knitting. As you can see, I haven't done all that much, but it's coming along. And this project bag is really not big enough for two skeins of yarn, plus a bulky hat, but that's what I'm using. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit of beautiful yarniness. I placed an order with Cakewalk Yarns a little while ago, but I feel like I hadn't shown you any, any good yarns, so I wanted to just pull these out. They are both, they are all three. The Stash Base, which is an MCN. And they are, this first one's Portland, this one's Algin, um, that's my favorite, and this one is Rhinebeck. Of course I had to buy it. So those are in my future. And then, what man, he might be yelling. No, I don't think so. And then last but not least, what else did I want to talk about? Bracelet, new books, year on review. I am, and goals. So I set goals for myself every, every January for the coming year just to, I think it's fun to work towards goals. I felt very short of last year's goals. I need to, um, I want to do a little segment about what I actually did accomplish because I accomplished a lot, but not 100% of my goals, which is fine. Shoot for the moon, end up among the stars. That's what I do with my goals. So to that end, I haven't actually nailed down what I want my goals to be for 2013, but I have some rough ideas, and they include books. Okay, so, so my family loves me, and I got six knitting books for Christmas here. And it was like pattern, brain, overload, oh my god, so much beautifulness, I wanted it all. And I thought to myself, I have all these glorious books now. Let's try, how about I try to knit? And at first I was thinking like one a month, and then I was thinking how about three from each book? And then I went through and tagged out everything I liked in the books and thought, well, what if I, that actually came to 25 patterns between the, the five pattern books. This one's a reference book, so that was not really playing in the game, but I think it'll be a great resource. At SSK, I took Laura Linneman's um, Ends and Beginnings. I don't know what she, I think she called it Ends and Beginnings class, and she uses this book as her reference for that, or she did, anyway, she referenced how great it was and that we could answer a lot of our questions using this book, so glad to have that, but not a pattern book. So, 25 patterns I really want to knit. You want to see them? Should I share them with you? I'm not doing book reviews, I just want to show you what I like, and I think for 2013 my goal is going to be to try and knit 13 patterns out of these, out of these five books. So, uh, one a month, a little more than one a month, the majority of them are sweaters. So, I don't know. As you can see, I'm leaning towards sweaters with a dark and stormy, like, it's, every, it's in everybody's coffee or something. We're all heading on the sweaters. Like, at first, everyone was like, stop, crazy, and then we went to shawls, and now we're going to sweaters. And sweaters are very functional for me. They are the most functional of them. And, I feel like socks are wonderful, I do wear them, but I want to showcase my knitting skills, I don't want to bury them in my boots, so I'm going to knit some sweaters, so maybe the goal will be 12 sweaters this year, or 12 tops, I come best as a sweater, and I do them for Roland, myself, I know my dad had asked me to knit him a vest and a habit, and I really should, because that man deserves it, so we'll see, we'll see, but Okay, so between these five books, let me just give you some numbers here. There are 13 sweater patterns I love, 
There are seven hat patterns I love. There are three mitten patterns, one cowl, and one pair of slippers. So I wouldn't have to do all. If I wanted to do 13, I could do one sweater and then the other things. So I'm also like, why is it you come up with the best gift ideas after Christmas? <laughs> I need to jot everything down and start my knitting now. And I'm always motivated. It's the winter. It's a good time to do knitting. So I'm going to knit some Christmas gifts too. So the first book I, I got was Weekend Hats. And this is 25 Knitted Caps, Berets, Cloches, cloches and More by Cicely Glauer McDonald and Melissa LeBray. 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 The first pattern I like is the Flyer Cap. So that one, I think the buttons really make it. It looks um, pretty straightforward to knit. Just an interesting little knit. The next one I like is the Welted Toque. I just think that's cute. I like that sort of gathered look, either gathered this way or gathered that way. I think it's a nice touch. Uh, the next one I like is the Shore Hat. There's that one. Um, it just looks adorable, and I could see my cousin in that one. So we'll see if I get that. I really also, I didn't mark it, but I'm just going to show it to you. The layered cloche, I also really like that one. I'm not wild about the brim. Which picture? That picture, you can see the brim on it. Not wild about the brim, but I really do like this um, string. I don't the tie detail that's going on there. I really like that, but not enough to knit it. Cloches, I have a cloche. I never wear it. It's in my eyes all the time. Uh, the Roush Beret, 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 Roush Beret, which is actually the reason, by Susan B. Anderson, is the reason I wanted the book to begin with. So that one will probably be one of the first things onto my needles. I'm behind with the SS getting it along. If I had done that, I would have done it. If I had had this book, I would have done, I would have been part of that. But So there are four patterns out of uh, Weekend Hats that I want to knit. The next book I got is the Best of Knit Scene by Lisa Schreier. And this is just the greatest things out of the magazine. So of course, the geodesic uh, cardigan. I love that sweater forever. I don't know how well you can see it, geodesic cardigan. Um, and yeah, sizing is great on that. So that's one option. I also really like the opulent raglan. Has this great cable detail. Those ruffled sleeves are not for me, so I would probably leave those off, but I do like the cabling. Uh, doo -doo. That one's by Wendy Bernard. The Michael Mess Myths by Cicely Glowick McDonald are perfect for my new boss. Like, I've got to get those on the needles and off the needles and give them to her for her birthday or something. She wears fingerless mitts, she wears hats. She is an accessorized, glamorous lady, and like, she'll wear mitts all day. Like, that's part of her outfit for the day, and I wish I could do that. I can't. I'm not that cool yet, but she does. She pulls it off and looks gorgeous in them, so she needs a pair for me, hand knit. I, think, I know she would love it. She's definitely knit worthy. So, uh, finally, the Halibaris yoke sweater. This in the magazine is in green. It was a cover sweater. I have loved it since it first came out. I just haven't knit it because I believe my problem is the yarn. It's a chunky number five, bulky, and you knit it on ten and a half needles and none of the yarns I own match up with that. So, and I haven't wanted to go out and buy a sweater's worth of it. But I do have, no, but I don't think it, I don't think the eco wool is chunky enough. But I've wanted to knit that for a long time. And then the Berkshire Dolman sweater by Melissa Wero. It's really classic. Really, really classics. Yeah. Elbow length sleeves. Nice chunky knit. That would be really, really fast to knit. It only goes to size 45 though. So may have to do some tweaking there. So that was the best of knit scene. Um, the next book was November Knits. This cover sweater is my sad. Uh, the reason I wanted the book was this sweater. Sizing does not cooperate with me. So this is the Burdock Cardigan by Maura Kirk, and it goes to a 40-inch bust. So I would have to do some serious... I don't want to. I don't want to. I shouldn't have to. So I love it, but I'm not going to knit it. 
But I was happy to find that the Market Jacket by Tannis Gray. Also really like that one. like that one a lot. I hope I'm not getting it. No, I'm not. It's just the requirements for it. So that's one. The Cobblestone Trench Coat. I would never knit a trench coat. That's just not my look. But if you made it shorter, I really like the collar. I really like the pockets. I think she's completely adorable. Love the buttons. Like Something about that coat just speaks to me. So love that. The Trefoil Cardigan by Gendron Johnson. Gundren Johnson. Sorry, I butchered that name. Really like it. Like the buttons, all the buttons down the front. I'm sure I wouldn't like knitting buttonholes. I would forget. I tend to forget buttonholes, but I like the yoke color work cardigans. I need to do one. I have a, a knit seam pullover that I bought the yarn to do a color a yoke color work sweater for myself, and I just haven't done it. Oh, here's another one. I did different color tags to warn myself. So this is the Savannah cardigan by Jane Richmond. Another very lovely sweater. Sizing to 41 inch bust. But I do so love this detail right here. And it's pretty straightforward with the just stocking up body. So I think I could adjust that pretty easily. Love that detail. Love it, love it, love it. And it's a sport weight sweater. And I bought a bunch of sport weight sweaters. Lastly, the Abilene cardigan. Doesn't that just make you think of the help? Doesn't that just make you happy, Abilene? I would smile every time I said the name of my sweater. Um, this is by Carrie Bostick Hogs. Oh. Okay. Um, Knitting 24-7 by Veronica Avery. And here we have the 1965 arm warmers. Really like those. The, I'm rushing because the camera battery is going to die on me. Spiral Tweed Cloche, which is the reason I wanted that book to begin with. The Elemental Pullover, very, very pretty, um, but it uses Ultra Alpaca Light, which means fingering weight. Not likely to happen for me, but I wanted to show you because it's pretty. The Pinstripe Slouch Hat is super cute. That was like added bonus for me when I stumbled across that pattern because I really, really, really like it. The Winter and Summer Slippers, definitely great use of some of the bin of felting wool I have in the garage. I have a whole bin of wool because I used to be a love to felt things. So maybe I'll make a few pairs of slippers. Those are always a good way to show the love. And then the floor de lis hat is just, go just, just gorgeous. Super cute. Super, super cute. So that's uh, six patterns in here knitting 24-7. So knitting 24-7 in November knit had the most that I liked. Knit scene was next. This one, it was almost every pattern, and then um, Weekend Hats had a handful of hats I liked. So that's 25 patterns I want to knit. Wish me luck. <laughs> It'll be an adventure and you'll like it. Uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Feel free to join in. I'm not sure if it'll be first or last, and definitely going to mix them up. Some hats, some sweaters, some slippers, you know, whatever I feel like is what I'll be knitting on. In case you're curious. <laughs> and I think that's all I've got for you. You don't want to walk around with it. You're just going to stand there, huh? You're just going to stand there? snow outside. It is cold and windy and it's the perfect weather for cuddling up on the couch, turning on a podcast and doing some knitting. So I think that's what I'm going to go do next. Perhaps I'll be casting on for the dark and stormy. <laughs> I hope you guys will enjoy, will join me and then we all enjoy the process together. So until I talk to you again in 10 days or so, uh, take care, happy knitting, and enjoy.